You will need to work with the files and file system in PHP at some point. So let's cover the basics. The first function is the scan dir and that will just list all files and directories within the given path. So if we do dir equals scan dir and here we'll specify the directory, I will use the magic constant to specify the current directory. And now let's var dump dir and see what we get. And we get dot which refers to the current directory. We get two dots which refers to the parent directory and we get index.php which is the only file in this directory. You could then use a loop to loop through these files and determine what you want to do with them. You could use things like is file or is dir to check whether a file is directory or a file. We could access the third element of the array which is index.php and here we can check if it's a file and it will print true and we can check if it's directory and it will print false. You could create a new directory using mkdir function and delete a directory using rmdir. So for example we could do mkdir and the first argument is the directory name so we could do foo and then you could pass the permissions as a second argument and the third argument is whether you want to create directories recursively or not so let's create a directory foo and we refresh we open the project we see the directory foo is created we can then delete the directory foo using rmdir and we refresh the page and the directory is gone just a quick note that when deleting a directory it has to be an empty directory otherwise you'll get a warning as mentioned you could create directories recursively so you could do mkdir foo slash bar and specify a recursive as named argument to true and now if we refresh the page and we open project we have foo and bar so let's delete foo bar and this will just delete the directory bar so let's comment this out we refresh the directory bar is gone and let's delete the directory foo and that's gone as well you could check if the file or directory exists by using a function called file exists. So we could do if file exists foo.txt, then let's print out the size of the file. So we could use another function called file size foo.txt, and otherwise let's print file not found. If we refresh the page, we'll get file not found. Let's create a foo.txt and put hello world in there. And we refresh, now we get 12. Something to be aware of here is that PHP will cache the return values of some of the file related functions for better performance. And I'm going to post a link in the description for the full list, but the function file size is one of them. For example, let's clear out the content from foo.txt and refresh the page, we get zero. Now let's try to put some content into the file and we can use a function called file put contents to do that. So I'm going to call file put contents and let's put some text from here like hello world and let's echo out file size again. So if we refresh the page, we're going to get zero and zero. And that's because the result of the first file size call was cached and when we call it again, it's just printing the previous cached value. You can clear cache by using a function called clears.cache which will get you the correct results. So before I refresh the page, we need to clear the foo.txt file again save and now if we refresh we get the zero the first time and we get 11 the second time so just something to keep in mind when working with these functions all right so let's actually move on to opening the file and reading the file line by line so let's try to open foo.txt so let's do file equals f open foo.txt and we can specify the mode here and i'm going to leave the link in the description where you can check all the available modes but we could open file for reading for writing for both reading and writing and so on so let's open that file for reading for now and the result of f open is what's called the resource and resource is a data type that we haven't covered yet resource is just a variable that refers to an external resource it is a reference to that external resource which can be a stream file and so on there are functions in php that create return and work with resources and f open is one of them in addition to opening local files you could also open remote files by specifying url but that might not always work because opening files remotely might be disabled by the server. Fopen will return false and emit warning if the file is not found. Sometimes developers use error control operator to suppress this warning and you may or may not have seen this before, but you might come across it eventually in some code bases. So if we try to open a file that doesn't exist, something like foobar.txt, you're going to get a warning and it will return false. So if we try to bar dump file, we'll get false. And what they do is that they suppress this warning so the warning is gone and they check if the return is false to see if the file was open successfully or not.
or not. This is not good and you should avoid suppressing any errors. Instead consider building a better error handling. So instead of suppressing errors what you can do is you could use one of the other functions to check if the file actually exists. So you could do if file does not exist print file not found and return otherwise open the file. So if we refresh we're going to get file not found. So let's change this back to food.txt which exists and we refresh we're going to get resource. So let's actually now read this file line by line. We can put a loop here and we can say line equals to f gets file and compare that to false with strict equals and we can print out line with a break line. If we refresh the page we see hello world because that's the only line in the file. Let's split that line into two lines and if we refresh again now we see two lines. So what's happening here is that we read line from the file using fgets function and assign it to a variable called line. And then we loop for every line until the returned value from fgets is false. Note the use of a strict comparison here because the returned value from fgets might be a value that could evaluate to a false. So doing loose comparison could result in unexpected bugs. And finally, after we're done working with the resource or with the file, we just close that file using the fclose function. You could also write into a file using a function fwrite, and you could also read from a CSV file using fgetcsv. fgetcsv is similar to fgets, but fgetcsv parses the line when it reads it, and it returns an array that contains the fields it has read. The default delimiter for fields is comma, but you could change that by specifying it as one of the arguments. So if we change this fgets to fgetcsv, and let's put this as comma separated here, let's save that, and now we can can do print r line and let's remove the break line and we refresh and we see that the zeroth index is a one is b and two is c and then the second line is def and third line is ghi another way of reading file content is by using file get contents function which will store the file content into a variable so we could do content equals to file get contents and specify the file name which is foo.txt and you could specify the full path here and then echo out content and if we refresh we get hello world you could also specify the offset and length to get the content at specific location so we could use named arguments for that and we could do offset three length two and if we refresh we get l and all. You could also get the content of a remote file by specifying the URL, though this might not always work depending on the configuration on that server. And I would not necessarily use file get contents to get the content of a remote file. There is a better way to get the content of a file from a remote server and make HTTP requests by using a library called curl and we'll cover curl in a separate video so don't worry about it now. You can write content into a file by using file put contents function which basically does the same thing as f open f write and f close combined if file does not exist it will create it otherwise it will overwrite you could also have content appended instead of overwriting it by specifying the flag for it as the third argument in this case we're trying to put hello into bar.txt and because bar.txt does not exist it will create that file and put hello in it so if we refresh page we see that bar.txt was created and it contains the content that we passed let's call it again and now let's put the word world and if we refresh the page we open bar.txt and as you can see the hello was overwritten by world we could append this instead of overwriting by specifying the third argument which is a constant file append and now if we refresh the page we'll get hello world let's delete the file bar.txt to delete files you could use a function called unlink so we could do bar.txt and refresh we see that bar.txt is gone you could copy a file using a function called copy so let's copy food.txt into bar.txt. So if we refresh the page, we see that bar.txt was created, which is identical to food.txt. If the file already existed at the destination, it would overwrite it instead. If you want to move the file instead of copying, you could use a function called rename, and rename will work for both the files and directories. So we could do rename food.txt to bar.txt, and if we refresh the page, we see that food.txt is gone, and we are just left with bar.txt. And finally, to get the information about a file, you could use a function called path info which will return an array containing things like file name extension base name and so on this is it for this video thank you so much for watching if you like my tutorials please give this video a thumbs up share and subscribe and i will see you on the next one